I was writing songs which were like more catchy and I thought that it, it didn't fit to the Ad Venus because it, it should stay like this very creative and uh, and strange project with this progressive rock. I think it was a good de uh, decision to like split that two projects. What's up, everybody? It's Keefe of GhostCultMag.com. <laughs> And I am so honored and happy to see you today, Sore Natelli, uh, with a brand new solo album coming out. Very exciting to chat with you today. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. Thanks uh, for having me. I'm doing great, and I'm excited for my new album to come out at uh, August 18th. <laughs> yes, yes, Addicted to Color. So many things, such a fun record, such a, you know, I would expect nothing less, of course, you know, uh, just a rocking record and a badass record, but it's fun. And I think that's the number one thing. I listened to it a few times yeah, and, I, and I listened to your whole, you know, when I go to interview somebody, I go all the way back and all the way forward to the new thing. And I love how much fun you seem to be having on this record. It's, it's just very upbeat and hopeful and fun. Yeah, thank you so much. That's also uh, what uh, is something of the most important things for me to write songs. And uh, I also want that the listener have fun listening to it. So, yeah. That's great, thanks. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I don't know if people are really aware of this. You have made in a, a bunch of records in a short span of time in your <laughs> career. It seems like you're always working, but honestly, even from project to project, you know, for, you know, founded Burning Witches and, and a new band and now a couple of solo albums in just a short span of time, it feels like you're always working and writing in the studio. Do you write constantly or just for what the project requires um actually it's it's i'm working like always or it's, it's something like i do um just if i wake up in the morning i'm like i i am a musician you know so everything is like uh, inspiring me and sometimes i i take a shower and i have an idea oh, i want to write a song about that you know so this is uh, it's kind of hard to say when i really write songs so i just um, have these ideas and then i um i record it and uh, when i have time i sit uh, to it and uh, yeah and write it like until the end so but um i also have um for example that venus um is is a band i have since years so i started writing songs in 2013 um and yeah there was a lot going on there already so yeah and then how do you separate from dead venus to your solo career albums they have been slightly different yeah. uh, obviously you're always going to be who you are and you're always going to sound how you sound but they do seem you know they seem like very independent projects from each other uh, that's that's true and that's also something i i want to have like that so i was um um i was writing songs which were like more catchy and i thought that couldn't uh, or it, it didn't fit to the Ad Venus because it, it should stay like this very creative and uh, and strange project with this progressive rock. So um, I think it was a good de decision to like split that two um, projects. And now I have uh, Serana Telly, so my solo thing and the Ad Venus. Right on. I don't know if you're a fan, uh, but it reminds me a lot of Aneka Van Gisbergen, a uh, wonderful vocalist. Anybody who's followed our channel for 10 years plus knows that we love her and have interviewed her before. And she also has a career where she doesn't feel like she's bound to anything. She could do any record, could be different. You go out and do a solo acoustic tour, sing with a progressive metal band, put out her own records that are kind of pop and chill, but also, and that's great, again, yeah. really great. Uh, you, you remind me a lot of her at this stage in your career. Yes. And I mean that uh, very sincerely. I'm a huge fan. Um, I actually need to, Thanks. when I talk to her, I have to contain myself because I don't want to go over the line of being, you know, <laughs> too much of a fanboy, uh, you know, and, and keep the respect hit there. But uh, she's been very good and kind with me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm literally. That's, that's like, totally okay. <laughs> I, that meme. I think it's okay. Like a few times can't do it with everybody. Uh, but yeah, that's, I feel like your career is, is heading in a very similar uh, direction. And, uh, and I'm awesome. uh, yeah, very, uh, I mean the compliment. So yeah, th it's such a good record and it's got a lot of flavors to it. So I like that, you know, we got some rockers and a couple of ballads. Um, it doesn't get too slow. <laughs> which is good i think you know it's good to bring it down and have a dynamic across the album I, I don't know i don't think people really i feel like people still want to hear albums that are sequenced this is the thing I, I return to as a topic i love i love just listening to an album when i hear a record that's very satisfying to me front to back and i don't skip anything that's important to me. Is it important to you as a fan and also an artist? Yeah, of course. So I also listen to albums and I love if uh, if it takes me like somewhere else from the first uh, 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 yeah, the first thing you hear. So 
that, that's great and that's also something I want to do and um, I put a lot of time actually into the set list of the album so um, that, that it really sounds great so that the, the songs fit together and it has like this own dynamic if you if you listen to the whole album. And uh, like with all the Metalville records and shout out to Metalville records, uh, it's immaculately produced. It sounds fantastic. Uh, also very important these days, you know, with the uh, technology being the equalizer, right? Anybody can make a record, which I encourage everybody to make a record and you see how hard it is for fans who are out there typing angrily at home. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy to make even the most, you know, even if you have all the gear at home, if you have, you know, uh, your own DAW, you know, you can you, you go make a record and see if you can do one, by the way. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do appreciate how great sounding this record is. It's really, I right. love where the voice is in the mix. I love the instrumentation. Uh, it's it's pretty tremendous. Yeah. Glad to hear. Uh, in terms of now, this is, you know, for your solo career, as much as, uh, you know, having a separate band and your other projects in the past and probably future, uh, you know, do you put a premium on especially the mix for your vocals? Is it, it's your name's on the album, your face. <laughs> it's important that it sounds a certain way, but also, you know, that's also, you know, you're, it's, you're going to live with it forever, at least this part of it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's right. And uh, I think it's, it's important that you know how uh, your album should sound. And um, this is, I, I know it from the beginning when I start writing the songs, I know in which direction it should go. And um, it's great to work with Rico uh, together. Um, he's a great producer and he actually can do the things I can't. <laughs> so he's good with this mixing stuff and we can uh, do the arrangements together, uh, which is great. And uh, we very often have like the same ideas, which is which is great too. So I feel like um, it's, it's not like I have to do something he wants. So it's more like we decide together um, uh, what it should be in the end. And of course, it's like the voice is um, with my music. It's very important that it sounds good and that it's like the most important thing. And all around it, um, the, the music is there. Nice. I also have someone who does the things I can't do here at Ghost Cult. So I appreciate that so much. Um, <laughs> it's very it's very hard to let somebody else have control over your baby and <laughs> share that experience professionally because it's Matt you know it's like oh this is personal too and yeah, it's, uh, it's important it takes to a lot of trust it sure, it sure does take a lot of trust it really it's hard for me I don't know about you it's tough it's been tough my whole life, but uh, that's if, my problem. If you find the right people, it's not it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's fair. Uh, and then just just generally speaking, do you sing every day? I know this is your job and your career, but also you know if you lose the passion, you know maybe it's not the same anymore after this much time in your life. Do you sing just every day? Do you sing for fun and joy also? As well as yeah, actually, actually, I, I never um, got to the point that I lost like the passion, as you just said. Um, yeah, so I I always also take care of uh, how I do the things so that it's fun for me too. So yeah, awesome. That's important. It's important to not lose the love. Um, I see it all the time. You don't want to have it happen to us. Uh, so let's do a little track by track on the album uh, Addicted to Color. I'll shout out the song titles and you can share whatever you feel like sharing with us. We appreciate you. Uh, the album, of course, begins with Song for the Girls, which is a badass anthem. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I just wanted to have like something for the girls for once. Um, when it comes to rock music or metal music, it's still like very uh, a man thing, which is not a problem for me. I love to work with men, and um, yeah, but I wanted to do a shout out for the girls, and I think they appreciate it. So it's like always a big party when we play it live too, and um, I figured that the the guys like the song as well. So <laughs> you can make a case that almost every other metal song, except a handful, are all about men anyway. So let's not have it be that <laughs> way. Let's let's liven it up a little here and and make it diverse and uh, open to everybody. I love the sing along part, especially toward the end. I can see a whole crowd in my mind, fists in the air, singing. It's going to be amazing. Uh, if it hasn't been already. Monkey and Zookeeper is the second track. Yes, uh, this is, I think, one of the weirdest songs I've wrote. <laughs> or, as, uh, of course, one of the weirdest songs on the album. And um, But I really like it because it um, it sounds like the um, what what's it about, you know? So it, it, it's about this um, craziness about um, uh, about money and, and beautiful, so being beautiful. And um, yeah, with having like this ex expensive clothes or whatever. And I think it's more important to um, to know or we, we should we should give more importance to how we are or who we are and what we do than to how we look. 
you know. Very well. I appreciate that. Left Behind is the third track. Yes, Left Behind is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it's more about to talk to people all around the world to, to just think about what we've done so far. Uh, we've done a lot of good things. We also done a lot of shitty things <laughs> to each other and to our environment. And um, so I just wanted to ask them, if, is, is that really what you want to left behind? So we should maybe think a little bit more. Awesome. I appreciate that. The title track is next Addicted to Color. Yes, this is um, one of the most important songs on the album um, because it also has like a, a hidden message or it's not that hidden actually um that i want to take a stand against the misuse of drugs and alcohol and uh, yeah and also um medicine like if you if you need it it's okay there's uh, not about that but um, there is a big problem all around the world um misusing that stuff and especially for young people and um i feel that i am like the, the new generation of rock music or with other people and um that it's important that that we are a good um, a role model for for younger people, so that they see you can you can rock and you can be fun without drugs and alcohol. Right on, like straight edge punk all the way. Uh, yes. The harder <laughs> way, speaking of ways, the harder way is the next one. <laughs> yes, this is um, a ballad, and um, I love to do that really like big ballads, so like they did in the eighties and the nineties. And uh, uh, this is one of it, and um, it just uh, is is my way to say. Okay, some people don't understand why I did this or this, but um, I know this is my way. And also, if it's if it's maybe the harder way, it's mine, and uh, and this is why it is right. So um, for everyone out there, just do your thing, and if you feel good doing it, then it it can't be wrong. The next track is "Wish You Well," one of my favorite songs on the record. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorites too, because it's like kind of aggressive, <laughs> but um, still in a funny way. And um, yeah, this is just the message. If if you're like in a fight with some people and they can't just leave it, leave it alone, um, in the end, it's it's good to say like, okay, just um, just just leave it, you know. So <laughs> you can you can hate me, you can wish me uh, that, that I go to hell, but. Um, I, I wish you well because I don't care anymore. There you go. Personal stuff. Uh, and probably some more personal stuff. Hit shit is the next track. <laughs> a great title. Yeah, thanks. Can't say it's it actually it's fun. It yeah, it's it's fun because uh, it uh, actually should have another title. But we were like internally, we were always speaking about yeah, the hit shit song. And in the end, I said, why why don't we just call it hit shit? And yeah, we all thought it's fun. So um, yeah, it's just uh, the, the stupid and funny idea to to really like uh, talk real to the people. So this is what you want. So I give you a fucking hit shit. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That's your quote right there, everybody. Uh, the eighth track on the record is Spaceman. Spaceman. Yes, this is a cover song of uh, the band For Non Blondes. And um, yeah, I'm a fan, of course, <laughs> big voice. And um, yeah, my producer uh, was actually his idea um, to do that song because he knows that she really likes it. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I really like the song too and the meaning behind it. And um, I'm very... Uh, happy with with uh, my version of it it's a little bit different than the original but i think it really fits to the album now and uh, it's fun right on and with everybody else covering their other big song it's it's a lot of fun that you did a different song than everybody else in the world right now that's like on tiktok singing what's going on um nothing <laughs> against that i've seen for now i saw four non blondes I've seen it's, a, it's a great song and it i sometimes is, yeah. also play it live with when i do acoustic stuff because the people are crazy about it so <laughs> nice. <laughs> why, why not <laughs> and then uh so this next track's a little long so if no one else has ever been there I have to make sure i get that correctly <laughs> yeah if no one else has ever been there before um yeah this is the the, the second weirdest song on the album <laughs> I was not quite sure if I should put it on the album, but uh, we had so much fun to do that. And um, yeah, so so we just did it. And uh, yeah, the message behind it is also like uh, there is a new planet and um, 
men come to that planet and what is the first thing they do they just <laughs> destroy it and um yeah this is kind of a funny way to like see how how we treat our environment so it's a very good message running through this album on a lot of tracks uh the tenth we're almost done it's a very long album which i really appreciate that's it. i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't kick any of the children off the island if you know what i mean the colors Thanks. of my soul is the tenth <laughs> track on the album <laughs> Yes, this is also a very fun song, and I think it's also one of the most, also the harder, uh, uh, more harder track, like uh, for the heavy metal guys. Um, and it's it's about like you you can always decide how you want to be or how your life should be. So just just color it with uh, with the colors of your soul. Nice. I also feel like it's a good counterpoint to addicted to color as well. It's kind of the upside of you know if you've been through a struggle, you can come out the other side. I like the positivity again. Yes. P- yes. It's very punk rock like pop, PMA. I like it. Be somebody. Another positive banger uh, towards the end of the album. Be somebody. Good message. Yeah, that's uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. And um, I also figured out so the last years that it's very important. So many people are like talking about things and we should do that. We should this uh, and or they are just like um, uh, talking bad about things and and I I try to do something and uh, so first of all you you need to be someone you need to have your own opinion and then you have to say it out loud and and, and some people will maybe not like it but <laughs> but um, yeah if you know what you want to do and what is right then you should uh, stand up for it and, and say it out loud. Awesome. The next to last track is think with an exclamation. Think. Think. Yes, with exclamation point. <laughs> I made sure that that uh, comes <laughs> to the title because it needs it. And um, yeah, it's how I said before, like with addicted to color or left behind. So um, most important thing or also our biggest weapon, what uh, many people sometimes forget is our mind. So um, if, if we are smart, we can do uh, many things and uh, we should sometimes think more be- before we like talk uh, or say something someone else said or um, yeah, especially if you see like what's what's going on on this uh, planet, you see something on TV or social media and people are like going crazy. And in the end, it's just like, just read it, um, uh, read other stuff. Um, yeah, just inform yourself before you, 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 uh, you say something to other people. So it's, it's important to think. <laughs> If only more people did. And then finally, uh, the album closes with All Your Tears. Yes, this is uh, uh, more like a sad song, which uh, I I decided, like, I I wanted to have it, like, for the end of the album because it, like, it closes it. And um, one uh, one person said it's, like, strange to, to, like, close the album with such a sad song. But, um, yeah, I think it's also, like, it, it leaves the listener to, like, more you know so what the hell <laughs> is this now the end and um the song is about it's something very personal um with experience with some friends and uh, family members that they sometimes give up before they start to do something and this is uh, something that really hurts to see you know when you see someone that is very creative and, and a very good person and he or she just doesn't believe in themselves and um yeah as i said they stopped doing it before they even started and it's hard so if you want to if you want to do something it's it's going to be hard but uh, no, no one says that it, it can't be done so just keep on doing it awesome uh, good messages all the way through. Really great album. I'm really excited for you to put this out. And Thanks. again, shout out to Metalville for always working with great artists and promoting some rocking artists out there that yeah. we really appreciate. Just before I let you go, I really also appreciate like your thing. time today. I'm sure you have a million of these to do. I always love to ask this. This is a fun question for me. I You always hear about the you know uh, where the rock capitals are in the world, where the big cities are, where a lot of bands come from Stockholm. Helsinki, but people don't talk about Switzerland uh, in general. Like there are so many great bands from this, you know, smaller <laughs> country than let's say Norway or Sweden, but like what, what's in the water over there where there's so many talented people coming out of there now and even historically? <laughs> I don't know. I uh, was also asking myself that. Um, I think in Switzerland, it's like we have a lot of good things here and um, the people are well with like money and standard, like living standard. But this kind of makes it harder to like go out of this and, and do something your own. 
Uh, for example, I, I see it when uh, when I started to do music, people were like, what the hell, this is not a job. So, <laughs> And uh, I never had money. I, I was like always like living just to do music. And this is something that, uh, that Swiss people don't know. So it's kind of very hard to break out of this and do something. And I, I think, or I figured that uh, this is where the passion comes from. So that um, you, you really need that passion because it's always like uh, you always have like the possibility to, to not do it anymore. So you know what I mean? So I could stop doing music and I could teach and, or, or just go sell something um, and, and, and I get money and I have a good life. So it's like it really needs the passion <laughs> to, to stay on that path. <laughs> so um, that's, uh, that's my opinion why maybe uh, some really good uh, artists come from Switzerland. And um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, good answer. I appreciate all of that today. Thanks for unpacking all this with us. Congratulations on this new album, Addicted to Color, coming out August 18th from Metal so Records. Soda Natalie, thank you so much for hanging out with Ghost Call today. I really appreciate you. Thank you. It was nice and fun.